Hey guys, last night I went undefeated in a webcam limited deck battles event with Crocodile, winning myself four promo packs. This video, I'm gonna show you some tips so that you too can decimate the competition with my boy Croc. I need it! <laughs> Crocodile is easily the hardest of the four decks to play in the limited deck battles format. So the best advice I can give you, practice. You seriously need all the practice you can get. If you're not practicing enough, then you're not going to be able to know your matchups very well. And knowing your matchups is really important for Crocodile. The reason that knowing your matchups is so important for Crocodile is because Crocodile is a tempo deck. What does that mean exactly? A tempo deck is a deck that tries to control the pace and speed of the game so that they always have an advantage. Now this advantage usually comes in the form of Crocodile at least, from having cards on board, life leads, and good control over what's going on, not usually from having more cards than your opponent. As a matter of fact, you will often be at a card disadvantage and need to rely on your tempo advantage to get ahead. So why does all that mean it's really important to know all of your matchups very well? The reason is because in order to establish tempo into different decks, you need to accomplish different goals. For example, when you're playing into Kaido, you know that their early game is excessively weak and when they're most vulnerable. This is because Kaido is a control deck that uses its early turns to set up so that it can dominate the late game. This means that establishing a very strong lead in your early turns that is harder for a Kaido deck to answer through things such as a 5-drop Crocodile or a 7-drop Doflamingo is incredibly important. On the other hand, Mono Red Luffy is a mid-range deck. They're trying to whittle down your life with an early lead that they're going to generate so that then they can close the game in the mid game. What this means is that in Takedo, you need to play more aggressively, whittle down their life sooner because they're going to beat you on the late game. But if you're playing into Luffy, you need to play more defensively. You need to focus on their board more, keep your life up higher because you're going to win the late game grind. This is what it means to be a tempo deck you are going to play at the speed that most disrupts what your opponent is trying to do. This means that in order to know how to play against blue, you first need to know how to play every other deck. You need to know what speeds they are going to want to be at, what plays they might be making. Predicting your opponent's next move and knowing their deck inside and out is what makes you a good blue player. If you don't have the time to dedicate to that kind of mastery, blue is not the color for you in the limited deck battles. So now that we've gotten that general advice out of the way, I'm going to throw a few cards up on the screen and give you specific pieces of advice for those cards, as I feel it will further your play. First, let's talk about your leader. Your leader effect is very strong, but I see a lot of people misuse it. Unless you absolutely have to, you realistically shouldn't be using this leader effect until you're at 10 Dawn. If it can really hammer down a lead or if you're going to lose on the following turn, there are a few times to do so, but your goal is to get to 10 Dawn and then use this leader effect every possible chance that you have a valid target. When you're at 10 Dawn, try and use the leader effect whenever you can, unless you need the excess Dawn for if you have a Doflamingo in hand for the following turn, or if there are no real good targets to hit off of it. If you're running this 5-drop Crocodile, which I suggest you do, uh, the sooner you get it out, the better. It is a dead card in hand. You shouldn't sacrifice making good plays to get this Crocodile out, as in you shouldn't not go for a Centomaru play or a Doflamingo play. But if the choices are this or playing a Pacifista, play this. Get it out as soon as you possibly can. Other cards will be better served for later uses. Don't play this card unless you're going to use its effect in the same turn. If you play this card and then it gets Jet Pistol away or Who's Who away, it's a huge disadvantage for you. There are a few exceptions to this rule, however. If you're playing into blue, you can play this card early because the worst thing that they could possibly do to it is return it to your hand. And that's not that big of a deal. You can just continue to replay it. Also, if you're certain that it's going to live. So if you're playing into green and on turn one, you play a blocker and on turn two, they play nothing. And then on turn three, you play this. It's safe to do that because the worst they could do is straw sort it down and then swing into it. But you have the blocker to defend it. And this will give you a large swing in the early game. But if you don't have those two examples, then you want to hold this card until you have at least six on so you can use its effect right away. 
Play this card as soon as is humanly possible, even if it means your bounce target isn't exactly what you want it to be. The 7k body is really necessary to keep pressure in this deck, which has probably less pressure than most of the other decks. The only exception to this is if you're playing into green. If it is your only way to bounce a 7 drop kid, don't use it unless you're bouncing a 7 drop kid, or you have a really good target like a Basil Hawkins that you just need to get off the board. It can be hard sometimes, but you need to be saving these Love Love Beams for the late game. Only use them early if you absolutely have to. Saving them to bait your opponent and lull them into a false sense of security wins me most of my games with blue. And if you're not drawing off of 90% of the Love Love Beams you use, you're not using Love Love Beam correctly. Last time I did one of these videos, I didn't include my list. I was planning on doing them in a separate video, but I got a lot of feedback that suggested I could, should include the list in the tips video. So I'll give you a few minutes here to pause. This is my list. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot, and I'd love to keep making awesome content for you guys. Go succeed with your crocodile lists. Hopefully the tips in this video will take you to great heights. Today's video was sponsored by Top Deck TCG. This is an awesome website where not only can you buy singles for some of your favorite trading card games, but it acts as a hub for various content creators so you can stay up to date in those games. This is their homepage. As you can see, they currently carry Flesh and Blood, Digimon, Transformers, and Star Wars Destiny. They are going to be carrying One Piece in the winter when its official American release comes out. If you go over to Game Videos and Podcasts, you can see some of your favorite content creators, including your favorite One Piece content creators, for all of these various games so that you can stay up to date on what is good right now. It's all very easy to use, and the guy is great. And if you use your promo code THEMOONMEN, not case sensitive at all, you'll get 10% off any order you place. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I certainly hope you did. You can find links to my Twitch and my Patreon in the description, as well as the promo code and the links to Top Deck TCG. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.